We're now in the midst of the Tasmanian summer and I wanted to come back and talk about these tomatoes that I planted. Those that have seen the earlier video will have remembered that when I planted these tomatoes I put plastic drink bottles into the ground as a watering system for deep root watering. So I wanted to give you a bit of a report on that as to how that worked and also a little bit of a roundup of what's happening in terms of harvest in the garden. Now the Tasmanian summer is generally dry and this year is no real exception. There has been some small amounts of rain but that has basically resulted in humidity and that has created problems in itself and I'll talk more about that later. But in terms of this watering system, what I found was that filling these bottles was way too slow. It would be fine if I only had, say, three tomato plants, but I've got 20 tomato plants here and that meant 18 bottles to fill. Now, it was okay early in the season when there was plenty of moisture in the ground, but as it began to dry out, the amount of moist water that you actually needed to put into those bottles was considerable and the amount of time it took me to actually do that was too long and because I've got so many other things to do it just wasn't happening now basically I have neglected these tomatoes somewhat because of the other things that have demanded my time I didn't get to tie them up a second time I tied them once and they are now hanging down and really too late for me to tie up because I would potentially break the plants. There's often, a, with this sort of thing, a window which you have to actually go and do the job and if you leave it too late, it's too late. You can't come back and make up ground. So I have to live with what there is there now. And this means, of course, that even finding the bottles to fill them is a problem. So while it was actually working early, it stopped working simply because I didn't have the time to fill the bottles. Now if I'd found a, a system to fill them where I could just turn the tap on and walk away that could have worked but what I actually resorted to was using this type of weeper hose. So I spread this weeper hose through the tomatoes and connected that up. Now what that means is that I can actually turn the water on and leave it on all night and let it soak into the ground. Realistically, I don't think I've been doing that enough. Um, I'm trying to avoid overhead watering because I don't want to do that because of the disease problems it can create. What I've got instead is a little bit of a problem which is some flower end rot. Here's an example of it where you see that the flower end has actually started to decay and the tomato will rot from that. This is caused by number one watering that has been irregular so the plant has dried out then got water and dried out and so on and that is exactly what has been happening with these tomatoes because i haven't been paying the attention that i needed to the other thing that will cause them is if there is calcium deficiency in the soil but the lack of water i think actually results in the plant not actually getting the calcium it needs as it's growing and causes this problem it's not huge but there is some of that there so I'm going to have to try and get more water to prevent the problem becoming worse. There is a good crop here though and we will still enjoy lots and lots of tomatoes. One of the issues with the weeper hose is that our water supply has a lot of sediment in it so that it can block from the inside very quickly if you don't actually filter the water first. So what I created was this device which is a, a micro irrigation filter inside there and a couple of connector ends one that will connect into the hose another onto the weeper hose and this allows you to have that on the end of your garden hose where the weeper hose connects and filter the water before it goes in and that is reduces the amount of blockage that's occurring and increases the lifespan of the weeper hose for me because summer is harvest time I, my attention has been on other fruits and vegetables that needed to be harvested such as the black currants. Beans need picking very regularly otherwise they very quickly get too large. 
Also zucchinis, you've got to keep attention on those. Turn your back and they explode and become like uh, footballs very, very quickly. But one thing that is a major high point of our harvest is the uh, peach harvest and that's been a problem this year. Today I'm picking peaches. The peaches produce so prolifically, there's so much fruit on this tree, it's amazing. You only plant a small tree and a little bit of annual maintenance and it turns into this much product. So much fruit to use. I have a problem though this year in that there is a lot of mildew or brown rot on the peaches. The condition, weather conditions this year are moist and warm which is the conditions that this type of disease likes. And that means that as soon as these peaches ripen they start to rot. So there's only hours between being ripe and rotting. Unlike previous years where I've been able to pick them and store them and eat them over a few days, simply can't do that. It means there is only one thing to do, and that's to get as many ripe peaches off this tree today as I possibly can, and to bottle them. When we buy food from a supermarket, we have the perception that it actually comes at our control. We can go and buy the small amount that we want when we want it. When you grow it yourself you realize how nature actually takes control and the conditions control what is actually happening when it's ripening. So this year it's actually ripened two weeks later than it did last year. It ripens all pretty much at once over about two week period of the year and the fungus condition this year means that it needs to be consumed rapidly. So you realise how we as humans are not really in control of our food supply, but nature actually has the say, and we need to be ready to respond. We need to give our time when it's needed. This often can be inconvenient, and the process of preserving food like this, putting it into bottles, taking the pips out, can be tedious, or dare I say boring at times, but the end result is worthwhile. And when I compare the alternative, which is to spend more hours at work and spend money to buy this food rather than produce it myself, it's really a no-brainer. I'd much rather be here producing it myself and processing it. Putting this work into your food makes you realise the true value of good food. I believe that the food that we buy is way too cheap. Mass production has lowered the cost and we undervalue the food. We tend to spend money on all sorts of rubbish trinkets that are going, things made of plastic, etc. that are going to break rather than spending money on something real and spending it on good food and nutrition.